I was busy thinking about Baby, I got issues, but I love myself Baby, I got issues, but I love myself I don't like the way Hello, fellow humans! <laughs> I am so sorry for going MIA for so long. Life happened if you didn't see the announcement. And I just needed that time personally. Any gays, I do realize this is a very late video. But it does have a special place personally in my heart that I will talk about at the end of the video. So I really hope you stay for that. However, these are the disclaimers. I went a little far and my Wattpad side got the best of me. But I put a timestamp for this. I do want to add, however, that that is a part of the video and this is mainly focused on Class 1A being grown adults and having a family and being a family together. I also want to quickly add that I made this video literally a year ago. This isn't exactly a part two, but it will be referencing to this video. You don't have to watch it in order to watch this, but just wanted to mention that. So that is about it. Sorry for the long intro and enjoy. Akio, stop running around. You'll hurt yourself. Deku was walking with his son towards the indoor playground in the mall. However, walking turned into a run when he lost track of his son. He swiftly weaved through the Christmas shopping crowd, trying to find his son. When he caught up, his son was already talking with another kid on the playground. He grabbed his son's arm as he caught his breath. Akio. You can't run off like that. What if you got hurt or someone grabbed you? Don't worry Papa, I have a strong quirk. Before Deku could stop him, Akio let out a large explosion from his hand. It made more than a few people jump and he apologized profusely. Deku was about to scold him more when a familiar voice interjected. Akio, what the hell did I tell you about using your quirk in public? Katsuki was walking towards them with their 15-year-old daughter Saoshi. What did the nerd do this time? Deku sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. He ran off again. Why is this kid so fast? He looked to what his daughter was holding and his eyes widened a bit. She was carrying two big Hot Topic bags on each arm. Saoshi, how much did you get? That looks like a lot. I went Christmas shopping you dumbass old man. And they also had sales. I just gave her money and told her it was her Christmas present. Okay that works. You'll be getting gifts from your aunts and uncles anyway, so you'll still have something to open up. We just have to worry about the rest of the kids. What about the aunties and uncles? I'm not getting gifts for all of those extras. Deku agreed, but tried to think of an alternative route. How about we do White Elephant again? We did it back in high school. Sure. Whatever it takes to not get something for all those. Aki stop eating random shit. You can't just eat anything you see. Both parents whipped their head to see their son with a cupcake in his hands and icing on his nose. Where did you? Deku pinched the bridge of his nose. Actually, never mind. Just stop eating and bin it. But. Katsuki put his hands on his hips with a stern expression on his face. Do you want to see Santa? The boy slowly nodded. Okay then get rid of that and get over here. We can't be here all day. Akio pouted before walking over to the trash and tossing the cupcake in there. He ran up to his parents and grabbed each of their hand in his, securing him in the middle. Papas let's go. Let's go see Santa. Deku smiled being reminded of how excited Kachin and him were to see Santa when they were his age. He looked to the side and saw that the blonde was looking back at him with a knowing small smile. Okay mini nerd. They started walking when their daughter felt the need to try to ruin her brother's childhood. He's already seven. Don't you think it's time we tell him Santa? Saoshi stop. Just because you figured it out at his age, doesn't mean you have to ruin it for him. Deku looked down at her phone and noticed she was texting someone with an interesting contact name. Cute extra. High voltage sign. Purple heart. She got a notification and smirked, blushing just the slightest bit. Who's cute extra? Katsuki whipped his head to look at his daughter and husband when he heard the unusual contact name. Her eyes immediately widened as she turned off her phone and held it to her chest. No one. Stop looking at my phone you old hag. No one ha? Huh? So you're texting a cute extra that doesn't exist. She blushed more at the word cute and looked away as she told them to shut up. Extra? 
It better not be one of those damn extras kids. Dad what the hell? Katsuki was about to push it further, but Deku sent him a look that told him to hold off on it. They kept the eye contact as they shared the same thought. Their daughter had a crush, and they might know who it is. Deku laughed to himself and Katsuki frowned and looked away. Papa look at Sana. The parents looked forward to see Sana sitting in a sleigh, and Deku bent down and smiled at his son. Let's go tell Sana what you want for Christmas. In the Aza's Problem Children group chat. Hey guys y'all are still able to come over for Christmas right? Yeah, Kayaka and I can still make it. Same here. Everyone in the chat confirmed they could come. Okay cause I was thinking that we could do white elephant for us and gifts for the kids. I'm down. Yeah sounds fun. Just don't bring any gifts that could embarrass me again. I didn't appreciate the one I got that year. That was fucking hilarious. Face with tears of joy. I hate all of you. Expressionless face. Love you too. Hey Aoyama let's match this year. Sparkles. Do you mean the sparkles? Ho sweater? Sparkles. Yes. I don't think that's the best idea. We're gonna have the kids with us remember? I second that. They'll be fine. They're too young to understand it. Hirudo and Sashi are teens. They'll know. If they're old enough to know, they're old enough to deal with it. I'm just surprised Dikubro isn't discouraging this. My youngest still believes in Santa and my oldest is already in the crush stage. There's nothing to object against at this point. Did you say crush? Grinning face with starry eyes. She likes someone? Grinning face with starry eyes. She's all grown up. Face with big pleading eyes. Okay so we're 100% going to force it out of her right? Smiling face with sunglasses. Definitely. If she won't tell us we'll figure it out ourselves. Faces that are up to no good and will snoop where they're not supposed to. Bro you went and messed up. Face with tears of joy. Yeah, I realize that now. Man face palming. I can see the face palm through the phone face with tears of joy. Guys, less than half of us are active right now. So let's just focus on leaving them with the question. And push the crush thing to the side. I'm sure everyone will be on board. What's the maximum though? Well by your standards, our 5,000 yen, about $30 USD, is your 14,000, about $100 USD, so let's stick with 5,000. I'm good with that. Just don't grill my kid too hard. She's just like Kachin. No promises. Faces that want the tea. I will make no such promises. I. Bye. This is gonna be great. Face with tears of joy. They were all at the Bakugo house, which was almost the size of both Mamos and Shadows. What did you expect? They were the number one and number two heroes. Izuku and Katsuki's parents were already talking in the living room, with their two kids sitting on the couch waiting for everyone to arrive. All the food was already set up and the very large tree was fully decorated. Deku was looking up at the tree, and felt his husband wrap his arms around him from behind. Doesn't this tree kind of remind you of the one we saw in the mall our third year of high school? Kinda, but that wasn't really the thing I wanted to remember the most about that day. Yeah, that date was fun. I wasn't talking about the date. Katsuki leaned down to softly kiss his partner, causing Izuku to let out a giggle. Can you old farts stop being so mushy? It's disgust. She got interrupted when the door rang, and they all knew the Shinso family was always the first to arrive. That's why it caught the couple off guard when their daughter practically ran to open the door. Standing at their doorstep was Denki, Hitoshi, and their 15-year-old son Hirudo. Um hi. Hey Saoshi. They kind of just stood there looking at each other until Uncle Denki spoke. Hey Saoshi, we know it's nice for you two to see each other again, but can you let us in? It's kind of cold out here. As if she broke out of a trance, she opened the door and rambled out an apology. After closing the door behind her, she turned to look at the other teen. So we have a lot of food if you're hungry like salad and mac and cheese and vegetables mashed potatoes or just plain potatoes if you prefer that and of course fried chicken or if you want something sweet we bought some ublha flan and pie or if. He laughed and put his hand on her shoulder, causing her to blush even more. It's okay, I can take a look at what you have. 
Want to join? Ah uh, yeah sure. Deku and Katsuki had finished greeting Denki and Hitoshi just in time to see their daughter make a fool of herself. Okay so he's definitely cute extra right? Katsuki face palmed and sighed. It just had to be fucking dunce faces kid. Well he's a good kid Kachin. I don't think it's such a bad thing. She's just like you. You would always ramble on. Especially when you started liking me. Kachin. Katsuki laughed before hearing the doorbell again. I'll get that. Go join the kids. After this, everyone started coming in until the whole party was there. Ho 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 bitches. Hey ho. Babe, the kids. Yeah. There's no saving your kids bro. Mommy what's a ho? Kenji. Isamu. Don't say that word. But mommy said. Kenji. Isamu. The little girl started running to the twins while her bird-headed father yelled at her to slow down. Fun fact. Xiao means soaring bird. I'm actually crying. Enage's moving on. Xiao. The twins ran to meet her and their father face palmed. Do they always say the same thing at the same time? That's kinda creepy. You get used to it. Her sudden appearance caused Kayaka to jump from surprise. Takumi you need to stop doing that. You scared the hell out of me. Just cause you have an invisibility quirk, doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. Sorry Aunt Kayaka. It's just so entertaining to mess with people. Yeah, you get that from your mom. She looked at Mina and Ijiro. Where did she get that quirk from anyway? We think it's from my grandpa. Her quirk is probably similar to a recessive gene in the family. Before the conversation could continue, a small human bumped into Mina. Sorry Aunt Mina. He took off, and following after him were the twins and Xiao. Sorry about that. He's a bit wild. It's okay, they're kids. What are the little ones up to this time? The group looked as Ida and Todoroki started walking towards them. They're just being kids. Running around. Causing havoc. The normal. This is why we don't have kids. Mom said I was practically a loose cannon always running around. Have you guys considered adoption? Yeah we have. But I think we're gonna wait a bit longer. Even kids without speed quirks are a lot to deal with. Yeah. They can be a handful sometimes but it's worth it. What you guys talking about? Kayaka looked at her wife and smiled. Kids. Like the one we're getting soon. She bent down and placed her hand on Mamo's belly. Hey little one. I can't wait to meet you. Mamo started blushing but was smiling. How far along are you? You look like you're about to burst. Actually I'm due in a few weeks. This one is gonna be a January baby. Seems like you're not the only one whose due date is close. Toru looks like she's close too. They looked at their old classmate who was resting on the couch, with Mashirio smiling next to her. It's kinda crazy to think that we all grew up to have kids or just be in relationships in general. Well not all of us. Aoyama, Shoji, and I are still the cool uncles. Yeah, and you spoiled the hell out of the kids, leaving the mess to us. Saro just shrugged. What can I say, it's my job. Hey extras get the fuck over here and grab some food. I didn't do all this cooking just for it to get cold. Catching the kids. Hey, they'll be fine. Deku just sighed as their friends showed their own way of amusement. Everyone was eating in different places of the house talking amongst themselves, some giving off more gossip vibes than others. I want to note that I'm Filipino and forgot that people actually sit together at one table for party meals. Enigaze on with the video. Shinso, Denki, Katsuki, and Deku were all sitting together, and the Ds were looking at their two kids eating together. Hirudo and Saoshi were laughing, both blushing as they talked with each other. Okay so they 100% like each other right? Oh definitely. My dumbass kid looks like Deku when we first started dating. I'm genuinely surprised you're not going off about the fact that your kid likes ours. Oh no, he did. And at the mall too. The mall? Why the mall? We were shopping and she was texting your fucking kid with the contact name Cube Extra. Before they could continue, someone cleared their throat. Y'all ready for a throwback? I'm pretty sure I said this last time, but I don't know if this is the best idea. Especially with the kids here. Saoshi, Hirudo, 
Could you take the kids upstairs for now? What the fuck? Why? You actually want to stay down here with them? Well I don't want to babysit those Dumbus kids and I have a feeling things will get interesting. Just get the fuck upstairs. Shut the fuck up you old fart. Saoshi, let's just bring the kids upstairs and watch a movie. The teen started to break into a nervous sweat, while the second gen hot had crossed her arms and rolled her eyes. Wait wait wait, what about the clear tree balls? Katsuki and Deku looked at each other confused. Clear tree balls? I'm Ko and I figured the kids would want to do something, so we bought the clear Christmas ornaments and paint for the kids to paint with. I think I have the paint in my bag. Don't worry baby, we'll keep the kids busy. That still includes you too. Come on kids let's go upstairs and paint. The kids excitedly ran upstairs, Hirudo just shrugged, and Saoshi rolled her eyes again. Thanks moms. No worries. You have fun kids. With that out of the way, they did the same as last time and each grabbed a number. Before we start we should separate the kids gifts from the white elephant gifts. Good idea Kiro. After separating the gifts, Denki stood up to pick his gift since he got one. There were many different sizes, but Denki knew that looks could be deceiving. Didn't Denki get one last time too? I don't know bro. It was too long ago for me to remember. Denki decided on a medium-sized box, and sat back onto the couch. I swear if it's another charger. All of them laughed at the memory of it. At least we don't need to worry about inappropriate gifts like last time. Everyone's eyes immediately went to Mineta. What? I know that cat ear and tail set was from you Mineta. I swear it wasn't me. Half of the people in the room deadpan causing the great head to sigh in defeat. Okay, but I know damn well you two liked using that. The couple immediately blushed, giving them the obvious answer. Reactions ranged from cringing to trying not to laugh. I'm not gonna lie I thought I was tripping out for a moment, but turns out we were right. Yeah, haha, real funny. Just hurry up and open your gift Denki. The blonde paused. It's not from you right? Chill, it's not, just open it so we can laugh at you again. Denki unwrapped the box and after opening it, he pulled out a Pikachu plushie. P-P-P-F-F-F-T-T-T it's you. Brah. This has to be a setup, there's no way it isn't. It's cute though, Kiro. It is, but I feel targeted. It's sparkles. Okay sparkles. I think is sparkles. Cute sparkles. Denki rolled his eyes. Let's see if yours is just as cute. I'm sure it'll be sparkles. Sparkly sparkles. Since he was the person with the number two, it was his turn to pick. After deciding on a medium-sized bag, he sat back where he was previously. So is it cute? Aoyama just sat there and cringed. What's wrong? Aoyama? The sparkly blonde pulled out the not-so-sparkly gift. Mina started laughing, and there were a few other muffled giggles. There was nothing wrong with the gift, it just wasn't an Aoyama thing. It was the typical e-girl attire. A black crop top, with a white and black plaid skirt, and a black leather choker. It's nice, it's just not very, sparkly. If you don't want it just give it to me. Takumi is starting to get into her emo phase. Didn't Floaty have an emo phase around that time? We don't talk about that. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean Kayaka and Takoyami still give off emo energy. You do too Tato bro. I'll keep it. I can just sparkles. Sparkle sparkles. It up. Well if you got that figured out already then Ima get my gift. She grabbed one of the smaller gift bags, and after sitting back and opening it, she smiled. Oh this is great. She took out a shot glass that said, sounds gay, I'm in. Oh I like that. We have tequila right? Oh no. That might not be the best idea. You guys remember what happened the last time she drank right? I have footage. Pinky was so fucking annoying. That was hilarious. Yeah that was definitely a night to remember Kiro. Ijirao, you're driving home right? Well now I definitely am. You guys act like I was so bad. Do you want to see yourself? Cause I have videos. Who's next? They all started laughing, and Tsu held her stomach laughing as she got up to grab her gift. 
She sat back down with the gift in her hand, and Eureka looked over her shoulder as she opened the present. What is it? Okay, this is funny. She pulled out house slippers that looked like bread loaves. Is that bread? Yes and I love them. I'm gonna steal those. Tsu giggled and lightly elbowed her girlfriend. Get your own present you dork, Kiro. Eureka laughed and kissed Tsu on the head before getting up to choose a gift. She picked a medium-sized bag and went to go sit down. What did you get? It took a hot second for it to register in everyone's heads. Is that a pink Jenga box? It is, but it has writing on the wood. What do you mean? Eureka opened the semi-clear box and took out a few pieces of wood. Can I see? Sure. After handing them to Deku, he read what was written on them. Take a shot. Tell an embarrassing story. You pick who drinks. Biggest boobs drink. What the fuck type of Jenga game is that? I think it's a drinking game. Whichever one you pull out tells you what you need to do. How did you know? DIYs of it has been popping up on my feed. Well I'm definitely down to play that once we recover from childbirth. I love this baby, but I need a girl's night. I went through that twice so I get where you're coming from. Let's see if mine is just as out there. Tora was standing up when Mashirio placed his hand on her upper arm. I'll get it Han. She thanked him and directed him on which gift to grab. After walking back and giving it to her, she opened the small box, followed by a smile. It's so beautiful. She pulled out a white butterfly necklace from the box. Oh I love that. It even reflects off the light. It looks like it's shining. I'm like 90% sure that was expensive and definitely over the set budget. Thanks Mamo. Mamo opened her mouth to say something, but closed it when she couldn't think of anything to say against it. Babe it's obviously from you. That's way over budget. I know but it was pretty. And you're welcome Toru. You know there's actually a Filipino myth about white butterflies. Really? How do you know about that? I'm actually half Pinoy. Mom sighed. I was about to ask why you didn't have a Filipino last name, but now it makes sense. Tell us the fucking myth already. Looks like someone's interested in this myth. Shut it Pikachu. Catch and calm down. You don't need to yell. Katsuki rolled his eyes in response. It's cool. Anyway in short they say in my culture that a white butterfly is a past loved one watching over you. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. It's like you always have that special person with you. As they continued to talk, a certain troublemaking team decided to drag a purple hair team down the hall upstairs. Why are we doing this again? Because I want to know what our parents and the rest of the extras are laughing so much about. Hirudo sighed in defeat. I would try to stop you, but I'm starting to realize there's no stopping you. She looked back at him with a smirk. Good, you're learning. He laughed for a moment before pulling his wrist away from Saoshi's grasp, and interlocking his fingers with hers. Lead me to a good hiding spot. She looked down at their hands flustered, but managed to ramble out an okay before walking again. Saoshi led him quietly down the stairs, and around a corner. There was a tucked away spot where they could clearly see the living room, but the adults there couldn't see them unless they purposefully looked. Here. You weren't kidding when you said you found a good hiding spot to see the living room. A decade of mischief will help you with that. However I think my parents forget they have a room. I'm pretty sure I saw my brother get made. They both cringed. I mean you kind of deserve it though. You weren't supposed to be down here. How the fuck was I supposed to? Hirudo quickly covered her mouth. Shh, they'll hear us. She just rolled her eyes in response and he removed his hand finding her reaction cute. Not that he would ever admit that. I still can't believe I chose a mud that says back and body hurts. Well I top you half the time so it makes sense. Shoto. Everyone either deadpanned or cringed. The two teens joined in on that. I seriously didn't need to know that. Yeah neither did I. I'm honestly just surprised Uncle Todoroki said that. It seems out of character for him. Wait. What's that in Aunt Kayaka's hand? Is that? Okay who the hell got socks that look like dog paws? Well you can be a bitch sometimes, so it works out. Some of them laughed, and the rest just deadpanned. Since when was your dad such a savage? 
My parents have known each other since they were like five. Pops definitely rubbed off on him. I can confirm his statement. Kayaka turned around and hit him on the arm. Watch it jerk. Oh, what was that for? Shouldn't Deku be the one you should hit? Kayaka just shrugged. Just felt like it. I mean to be fair dad should have seen that coming. When Kaji grabbed a gift and sat down, he pulled out a gift that made Deku choke on his drink. PPPFFFTTT that gift is definitely not meant for you. You don't say. He was holding up a shirt that read danger hazard with an arrow pointing down to where his area would be. I don't even know how to take this. I mean it's funny but it feels weird on Kaji. It's okay I can wear this around the house or as an undershirt. I can just imagine this extra opening the door for someone at home forgetting he's wearing that shirt. No wait cause hold on. I would simply just die on the spot from embarrassment. Not cause I can imagine the look on those people's faces. Everyone started laughing, enjoying the moment together. One gift was opened after another. Mineta managed to get the most tame gift of the night being a pride bracelet. Mashirio got a shirt that said, I'm an adult baby which wasn't completely inaccurate. Shoji landed himself some Hakazan Seik. Side note apparently Hakazan is a really good brand of Seik. And Takoyami got an interesting blanket. What the hell is this? That looks like a high cat at a rave. I honestly couldn't describe it any better. Whoever designed this must have been on something. Yeah no shit. The gifts from then on became a lot less tame. Why do I always get the suggestive gifts? What do you mean? Deku showed him the shot glass that was in the gift bag he grabbed. Remember my name you'll be screaming it later. Okay I actually like that one. I mean I think it's funny but this feels like a setup. Meanwhile in their tucked away corner, the two teens who had been muffling out each other's laughter, slightly cringed. At least so she did. I already hear that shit at night, I don't need to see it on a shot glass in the pantry too. I didn't get bottom vibes from Uncle Katsuki. Haru can you not talk about your perception of my parents' sex life? No that's not it, it's just the vibes they. Haru shut it, you're getting loud. You're whisper yelling too. Sashi covered his mouth with her free hand. Quiet, I wanna see what bullshit gift Pops got. This is a fucking setup. There's no way we both coincidentally got sex gifts. Wait what? Deku looked over his shoulder to see what it was. A butt plug. It's a fucking butt plug. PPFFFTTT what? Brah, you're kidding. Wait a fucking second. What is it Katsu bro? He took the box out completely to find that it is also. This shit lights up. There's a fucking remote to control the color. Wait, look at the image on the other side of the box. She was sitting across from him, so she was able to see it. This, this vibrates too. Deku had a mischievous look on his face as he put an arm around his husband, and whispered into his ear. Looks like we'll be having some fun tonight. Katsuki turned bright red in seconds and accidentally set off his quirk. Get your fucking mouth away from my ear nerd. Deku continued with the flirtatious smirk. Don't act like you're not excited. Can you guys not please? I'm getting more flashbacks to high school. Oh you're getting more flashbacks? Deku dragged this hothead into his room half the time. I bought noise cancellation headphones for a reason. You poor boys, can't say I relate. I hope they made the walls thicker back at the dorms somehow. The kids now are getting more daring than our generation did. I honestly just hit the couch in the common room every time I started hearing noise. Deku awkwardly smiled. Sorry guys. I'm not. It's not like we didn't enjoy ourselves. I feel bad for Saoshi. These walls aren't exactly thick. Said teen cringed at the conversation. I'm regretting all my life decisions right about now. I mean I did say. Don't act like you didn't get your laughs in too. Kayaka leaned her head back against the couch. So now that you're regretting all your life decisions, do you two want to head up now? The two teens froze and the other adults looked confused. Who are you talking about? Your kid and her boyfriend have been watching us from that tut spot over there. Without thinking, just like a certain blonde that she's related to, Sashi spoke before she could think. He's not my, I mean, shit. Sashi, 
And she's, well. They were now in full view, and all the adults noticed something that said otherwise. Why the fuck are you holding my kid's hand? The already blushing teens blushed even more when they looked down at their still intertwined fingers. Thinking bubble. Were we holding hands this entire time? They jumped away from each other, swiftly putting their hands behind their backs. I, I was just grabbing his hand to bring him down here that's all. So you're telling us you've been holding hands for the past half hour? Half hour? Why didn't you tell us? They didn't listen, and I wanted to teach them a lesson on when not to be somewhere. Especially when it's against their best interest. How the fuck did you even know we were here? The two teens zeroed in on the floor where Kyalka had extended her earlobe cable to the ground. They looked at each other to confirm they saw the same thing, and then looked back to the adults. Your quirk. Your fucking quirk. What the fuck? Smart kids. Now use those same brain cells to get your asses upstairs. I know Hitoshi gave you some Hirudo. And don't make out in the hallway. I don't need those poor kids getting traumatized. We wouldn't. We weren't. Your heart rate and faces say otherwise. Now get upstairs. They both opened their mouths to say something, but nothing came out. Saoshi face palmed and grabbed Hirudo's wrist to drag him away, causing him to trip over himself. Did that just happen? I think so. So Hirudo is cute extra. They heard a loud squeak and an explosion. Saoshi ran back around to look at her and. How the fuck do you know about that? So he is the cute extra in her contacts. My contact is cute extra on your phone? He was looking down at her with a smirk and she mumbled out a complaint, pushing him towards the stairs. They were now out of sight, but not out of hearing distance. Get the fuck upstairs you shitty extra. You mean cute extra. Haru. Stop flirting with my daughter you rip off Pikachu. Babe give it a rest. They're at that age now. Katsuki glared at the Shinso parents. You better tell your kid to keep it in his pants. You mean like how you did? Kiro. Moving on. Hitoshi it's your turn right? Sato to the rescue. Yeah. He decided to play it safe and go with a semi-small box. After opening it he was relieved to see that it wasn't a suggestive gift. Inside the box was a snapback that said I don't give a poop emoji. That's actually kind of funny. I know this is meant to be a gag gift but I might actually wear it. Denki snagged the hat away from him and put it on his head. Or I will. You still steal his clothes? Yes, and I'm entitled to it. Now who's next? Me. He quickly got up acting like a little kid, and swiftly grabbed a bag without thinking. What was in the bag was 100% a gag gift. Who the hell found ramen boxers, and why are they actually my size? Y'all on some other type shit. We can't even blame Mineta for this. I never thought I'd see the day where you have boxers that are the same exact color as your hair. Well technically it's not his actual hair. Isn't your natural hair color black? Yeah it is but I like it red. I'm gonna go put these on. You're screwing with us right? No I'm not. I'll be back. I'm not even gonna try to stop it. It's my turn anyway. You kind of just have to let him do his crazy shit sometimes. I am painfully able to agree with you. Todoroki quickly kissed Ida on the head before sitting down next to him. I'm sorry for all the trouble we put you through. Ida laid his arm behind Todoroki, resting it on the back of the couch. It's fine. What did you get? After looking in the bag they both deadpanned. I'm never gonna wear this. Oh no, what is it? He just handed the bag to her, and both her and Kayalka snorted as they pulled out the gift. It was a shirt that said I like bug bits and I cannot lie. Yeah, you're never gonna wear this. Babe you can just wear it around the house. True. I think we're almost done right? Saro, Mamo, and I still need to pick our gifts. Sato didn't even bother trying to decide. He just grabbed one and walked back to where he was sitting. I don't even know how to feel about this. Sato took out a mouse pad from the bag but printed on it was a collage of different hentai anim girls. Here Mineta, you have it. I'd be too embarrassed to use this. Don't mind if I do. Okay next year we're doing Secret Santa. It shouldn't be as crazy. I feel like that would have the opposite effect. Oh hey you're back. Yeah, 
And they fit well. Didn't need to know that. Well now you do. What did you do with the one you were wearing? Stuffed it in my pocket. I swear if that dirty ass underwear falls out of your pocket on my floor I'm gonna kill you. I wouldn't kill you but I'd make you clean that shit up. I don't want my floor dirty with your boxers. Noted. What did I miss? Tato bro got a shirt that said I like bug bits, and Sato got a hentai mouse pad that he gave to Mineta. I'm not even gonna ask. Smart man, Kiro. Good idea. It's just Saro and Mamo, no right? Yup. Saro stood up and to everyone's surprise grabbed both of the remaining gifts. He walked up to Mamo and held out both. Which one do you want? No you decide. It's not my turn yet. I insist. There's only two left. We can open them at the same time. Mamo thanked him and smiled before grabbing the medium-sized bag. They both opened their gifts, and they were appropriate to each one. Saro got a cup that said crackhead energy, and Mamo got a cute lace cat ear headband. Saro bro that works so well for you. I know right. Kayaka grabbed the headband from Mamo, and put it on her head. You look so cute with these on. Thanks babe. Now that that crazy ass gift exchange is done, what do you extras want to do now? Let's just chill and let the kids play upstairs. They'll come down when they're done with their ornaments. I'm not dealing with those mini extras right now. Where do you want to go then? She crossed her arms as she leaned against the hallway wall and thought about it, but then slowly realized that the only other place would be her room. Her still slightly blushed face jumped up to turning completely red. Thinking bubble. Should I? Would it be weird? After what happened he might not feel comfortable and awkward about being alone with me there. Alone where? She jumped, breaking out of her train of thought after hearing what he said. What are you talking about? The taller teen chuckled as he put his hands in his pockets. You were thinking out loud cute hothead. I'm not a hothead. Hiruto raised a brow as if to say replay the last five seconds. She tisked and looked away, walking towards her room. Just follow me extra. He followed her down the hall without question until they reached the door to her room. What's this? Saoshi hesitantly raised her hand to grab the doorknob and blushed even more. Promise me you won't laugh. Without hesitation, he responded. I won't. She slowly turned the doorknob and opened the door to her room. Um, come in. He did as she said, and she closed the door behind him. She was determining whether or not to lock it so they don't risk the annoying children bothering their peace, but decided against it. Locking it might have made things more awkward if he noticed it, and she wanted to avoid that at all cost. Her room wasn't what he thought it would be like. It was very neat with beige walls, and an imposters covering it, as well as shelves with books and figurines on it. She had a PS10 under her TV, a long white desk, and a galaxy and star projector on her nightstand. Her bed seemed to be galaxy-themed as well. She awkwardly approached him with her hands behind her back. So, this is my room. I like it. It's not what I expected, but I like it. What did you expect then? I'm not really sure to be honest, but it turns out we have a lot more in common than we thought. Like what? He walked over to her shelves full of many books, and looked at some of her posters. Well it looks like we're both bookworms, and since I recognize some of the titles I'm assuming we have the same taste. I also like gaming, and it appears that you're also an All Might fan. You have posters of some of my favorite animes, and it seems like you're a masochist since you have a banana fish poster. That's um, very observant of you. And we don't talk about banana fish. That gave me trauma. He let out a small laugh. You can say that again. He turned so that he could look down at her, their eyes meeting. Saoshi wanted to say something but her brain was short-circuiting as she was getting lost in his eyes. I haven't seen what a galaxy projection looks like in person though. Could you show me? She slightly shook her head as if to break herself out of a trance, and mumbled out a sure. Close your eyes for a bit. You won't get the full effect if you look at it without the main lights off. He did as she said, and she quickly turned on the projector, and turned off the lights. You can open your eyes now. He did as she said, and she loved the way his eyes slowly widened as she walked towards him. 
It's pretty right. I think pretty is an understatement. He looked down at her with a smile on his lips. You know, there's something else I noticed when I came in here. What did you notice? It's the suspiciously not fully hidden DIY mistletoe headband between the small gap of your nightstand and bed. The heat in her face was mostly gone, but it fired back up again at his comment. It's um. He walked over to grab it, and turned to walk back towards her. It's what? Is there a certain purpose for you having this and hiding it? A friend. A friend gave it to me as a joke. A friend ha. Huh? So it's not meant for you. He held it in front of him, and she avoided eye contact. Or is it for me? Her eyes shot wide and her heart skipped a beat at his words. She looked up to see that he had put the headband on himself so that it was hanging over both of them. Last time I checked there was a rule about two people standing under a mistletoe. Her eyes were drawn to his lips as she unconsciously took a step forward, and he did the same. Some rules can be broken. He leaned down so that his lips were close to hers. Do you want to break this one? She raised her hand so that one was on his neck, and the other was in his hair. Maybe. I don't need a stupid mistletoe to kiss you. Their lips met again, and just as his hand grabbed onto the hem of her shirt, the door opened. Hey sweetie the kids are. She paused and her jaw dropped, with all three of their eyes going wide. Imko saw a full side view of a shirtless boy with messy hair making out with her granddaughter with equally as messy hair. She noticed the hand that was still on Saoshi's shirt, and realized that she could have walked in on something much worse. I, I I'm sorry. She swiftly closed the door and the two shocked teens looked at each other in silence for an awkward amount of time. We should, probably go downstairs. Yeah yeah, yeah let's go. She got off the desk and he put his shirt back on. They rushed to the door until they saw their reflection on her full body length mirror. We should probably fix our hair. Good idea. They fixed their hair and walked out of her room. Before they reached the stairs he quickly pecked her lips just to establish that what happened wasn't just physical. Let's go see the rest of the family cutie. She wasn't able to come up with anything to say back to him, so she just rushed so that she could meet him at the top of the stairs. They were about to walk downstairs when they heard a door open and a familiar voice. The two looked at each other thinking the same thing. Is that Grandpa Azara? Hey kiddos. Sorry I'm late. He was hauling in a bunch of gifts as if he were Santa himself. Azara Sensei. I'm glad you could make it. Hey Sensei. How are you Sensei? Grandpa Grandpa. Look what I made. And mine. I tried to paint a snowman on mine. I painted snow. We painted orange Christmas trees. Let's give the old man some space and time to get inside first okay guys? Deku looked up the stairs at the two teens. Can you two help Azara Sensei with the gifts please? They both walked down the stairs and did as he said. Once they were all settled into the living room, the kids showed their parents the ornaments, and put them on the tree. Papa look at my Christmas ball. It's really pretty princess. Look we're matching. Wow they look exactly the same. They look amazing you two. I tried to paint a snowman but it looks lopsided. No it looks really good to Kumi. Papa. Dad. Look at mine. That looks great. You're such an artist. Maybe you should pick up painting, huh little guy? I put a bunch of snow on mine, 
And there's a house too. You got a real talent for painting Ken. After the joyful interactions with the parents and kids, the designated grandpa grabbed a huge sack that was filled with gifts. Okay kids, who's ready for presents? All the kids started jumping saying that they were, filling the room with their excitement. Dad did you really buy gifts for all the kids? Yeah. I figured it's Christmas so why not? Thanks Sensei. Thank you. It's no big deal. As long as the kids are having fun. Azar looked around and spotted the two teens that were helping the kids with their gifts. Hiruto. Saoshi. Come here for a sec. They looked at each other confused, but soon stood up and walked towards him. What's up Gramps? What you want old man? He grabbed two small boxes and handed them to the teens. Your gifts. Open them. The two looked at each other before opening the gifts. In both of them were bracelets that were thick in width, but they said different things on them. Hero Thunder. Hero Ignite. I heard from Ari that you two finally got your hero license, so I thought it'd be a good idea to show off your hero name. They both had bright smiles, and the adults who noticed smiled at the memory of getting their own hero license. They both jumped onto the hero and hugged him. Thanks Grandpa. Thanks, you geezer. Okay okay you're welcome, but can you let go I can't breathe. They immediately released him and he smiled patting both of their heads. Congrats on becoming heroes kiddos. Deku leaned on Katsuki's shoulder. Our little girl is all grown up. Yeah, she is. Grandpa Azawa isn't the only one with gifts. We brought some too. Both grandmas were carrying a bunch of gifts. Holy crap, mom that's a lot. How many fucking gifts did you get you old hag? Just shut up and help me. It's for the kids. Whatever. Thanks I guess. They passed out the gifts, and everyone laughed, smiled, and enjoyed each other's company as they made memories together. They made these special memories as a family. Hey humans! Thanks for watching my video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, I am so sorry for posting so late. However, I have learned that it is better late than never. And yes, I do realize that I may have gone a little too far with the Haruto and Soshi thing. A little bit too far being an understatement. Because my Wattpatter side got the best of me. So depending on who you are, I am either apologizing or saying you're welcome. But, any gaze, moving on, I did briefly mention in the intro that I wanted to post this and I still decide to work on this even after Thanksgiving because it has a special place in my heart. I do want to talk about it. If you don't want to say to hear it, that is perfectly fine, but I would appreciate it if you did. As of recent events, I have come to learn that it is so important to cherish the people you love and cherish even the smallest moments that you have with them. With your family, whether it is by blood or by connection, you know, because friends can be family too, which is something that I wanted to portray in this video, that family is what you make it and family can be what you're born into depending on your situation. And that regardless of with your loved ones, you should embrace and love and spend the time with each other because life is so short and so unpredictable so that is something that i really wanted to emphasize in this video and i hope you do not take this with a grain of salt thank you for staying and listening if you have gone this far i hope you had an amazing christmas and i wish you a happy new year and i love you all Bye. Have a nice day.